final piece for this chapter is going to be the kinetic model of an ideal gas and talking about ideal gases. So the first thing that you need to look at is that this uh, kinetic model is a series of assumptions um, about particles uh, bouncing around uh, in, inside of some volume of space, okay, and the certain rules that they, that, um, they abide by. Uh, one of the big things that you need to remember is that there is no potential energy between the molecules. There are no intermolecular forces, which basically gets at, at this idea that there is no um, internal potential energy, okay? So all the internal energy is solely based on the random kinetic energy of the molecules. So the kinetic energy of an ideal gas really just gets at these perfect elastic collisions between these molecules bouncing off each other perfectly. No energy is lost, they just bounce forever perfectly off of each other, okay? And that they go at a random distribution of speeds, uh, the volume is, is, is uh, negligible, okay, it's, uh, between each of the particles. Um, pardon me, the volume of the particles themselves is negligible, okay? The size of the particles is negligible compared to the distance between them. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, that's, that's basically the idea, that we have a random distribution, and it's truly random in terms of the speeds and the collisions, and that we have uh, perfectly elastic collisions that are always happening, okay? So to get at talking about these things, you do have to know these assumptions, okay? Um, or at least be able to identify them or correct them. Um, you also need to understand the study of pressure. Now we started talking about this in class, and the macroscopic definition of pressure is that it's force per unit area. Okay, pushing on a surface, it's going to experience a certain amount of force, and how much area it's distributed over is the pressure. All right. So newtons per meter squared gets at this unit pascals. Okay, there's a good joke I'll have to tell you about newtons and pascals some other time. Um, remind me in class. So. Uh, I'm talking about pressure here, okay, we're talking about air pressure, the most, uh, one we're most familiar with is pressure of air here at sea level, what we consider atmospheric pressure, uh, being 101 uh, kilopascal, or 1.015 times 10 to the fifth pascals, okay? So everything, all air at sea level it experiences this level of pressure, okay? Um, and so we're, we're going to, you know, that's the answer to number one there in your little practice problems, and we're going to talk a bit more about this and exactly, uh, you know, um, ways to calculate pressure inside of uh, cylinders and uh, piston assemblies um, in class, okay? But I want to move on, uh, I'd like to get to this next idea, which is the microscopic definition of pressure, which is going to be the total force per unit area, not from just, you know, a force being applied in the, in the way we typically think of it, but from all the collisions of gas particles with the walls of the container that there is holding them, okay? So what we have is this original definition of Newton's second law, some time rate change of uh, momentum, and that if you sum up all those forces from all those collisions, all those changes in momentum that those particles exhibit, uh, experience, and so average them over an area, that is the pressure that is the proper physics definition of what pressure is, okay? So um, there you go, those are your two definitions for pressure. Uh, you also are going to need to understand uh, the behavior of ideal gases besides um, exactly, you know, uh, the, the definition of pressure, all right? Um, so ideal gases do some very, very interesting things. Uh, one of the first is that ideal gases increase in temperature when their volume is decreased. Okay, so um, th this, is, this is definitely uh, very, very interesting. Um, and, and the reason for this, okay, is that as we move the walls inward, okay, we're actually uh, adding kinetic energy to the molecules, okay, and getting them to move a little bit faster, all right? Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's a very, very interesting idea um, that hopefully you came across I asked you about it in the simulations that you guys worked on in class. That was one of the very first things uh, that I showed you. So you want to be thinking of, as this little piston moves down here, you're, you're increasing the kinetic energy of the particles that are colliding with that piston. And so as you decrease that volume, that temperature will go up. Um, another thing to point out about ideal gases is that the increase in pressure when more is added to the container. Uh, the reason for this is just that there are more collisions that are happening. So this, is, this diagram here gets at number one, the increase in kinetic energy. Um, so Ke is added. Okay, so the added, total average kinetic energy goes up. So for number two, the way you need to be thinking of that is that there are more collisions that are occurring. Because there are more particles, therefore the pressure goes up. Okay? Um, so the next 
three here are actually ideal gas laws. Hopefully you guys remember this from chemistry. Uh, but the third one here is what we call the pressure law. Okay? And so for the pressure law, uh, what we do is we keep volume constant. Okay? We have this container where the volume cannot change. So volume is your control variable. And what we do is we increase the temperature. Okay? Uh, in other words, we're going to be heating up this um, container. And as we increase the temperature, the average kinetic energy is going to increase. So we increase the temperature by heating. All right, the average kinetic energy is going to go up. If the average kinetic energy is going to go up, those collisions are going to be happening um, with a higher velocity. If they're happening at a higher velocity, it's going to be a greater change in momentum, okay? um, assuming that there are less collisions with the walls. Okay? And that's a special type of collision with the wall. We may have to go over that. But that means that the pressure is going to also go up. Okay? So this relationship is actually a directly proportional relationship. We see P is directly proportional to T. And what we call this is the pressure law. I think I've, been, I've heard it called the gay lucid No, excuse me, the Abinson law. That's the other one we refer to it as. Sorry. A couple different ways. Um, so that is the first ideal gas law we talk about here. The next one, okay, is going to be the uh, Charles Law or gay lucid Law. Okay, so here we're keeping pressure constant. Look at how we keep pressure constant. We leave it open to the atmosphere, and this piston is movable. Okay, so P is the control variable here. And what we do, again, is we increase, we add heat to the substance, all right? And so temperature is going to go up. Again, the average kinetic energy of molecules is going to go up. And what's going to happen, okay, is that as we increase the temperature, okay, the average kinetic energy of the molecules is going to increase. Okay, it's going to hit that. Uh, piston with more force, okay? And so to keep the pressure constant on both sides, in other words, for this piston to be at equilibrium, all right, what's going to have to happen is the volume is going to have to increase, okay? And that increase in volume is going to basically reduce that pressure after a while. There won't be as many of those hotter molecules hitting that, okay? So in, in the end, excuse me, that's not well done now, all right, we see the volume increase. So we see that there's also a directly proportional relationship between volume and temperature if we were to graph it, actually, it would look something like this. So pressure and temperature. Again, temperature is the uh, IV in both of these. Okay. Um, constant directly proportional relationship. Same thing here for volume and temperature. All right. And now, in our final example, okay, uh, what we look at is the um, oh, wait, let me just label this here. This is Charles' law, or the Gay-Lussac law. OK. Final gas law. What we're going to do is we're going to keep temperature constant, OK? Um, this is a tough one, but we put it in a bath, all right, where it's supposed to always be at thermal equilibrium. All right, so temperature is our control variable here. And if we go ahead and change the volume of this guy, all right, the idea is that as we change the volume, we saw before that that change in volume is going to lead to an increase in temperature. But that temperature should be maintained constant. So if that temperature actually goes down, what we'll see uh, pardon me. If that temperature stays the same, what we're going to see is more molecules, okay, bouncing around, all right, and hitting the uh, walls more often. Okay, so this increased force, all right, from the particles at the same temperature, at the same average kinetic energy, but more of those particles hitting the walls, okay, that's what's going to cause the increase in pressure. All right. So we see a decrease in volume, increase in pressure. What this tells us is that these two variables are inversely related. All right. So what we end up with here, and I'll, I'll draw this again here. Okay, so V, we'll decrease V, okay? So T, we gotta keep it constant. So what this means is that at the same temperature, there's less space and there's more collisions, so P goes up. So we see P is inversely proportional to volume, all right? And if we draw this out here, volume was what we changed. That's the independent variable. Pressure is up here. We get this type of inverse relationship. All right, and this is what we call Boyle's law. Okay, 
So those are the three ideal gas laws. Um, what we'll do the next time is that we will combine all of them. We have a combined gas law that we will be using, an ideal gas equation of state. Uh, we'll do some practice problems. All right? And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So make sure you read all the extra notes that are in your uh, packet there, um, in addition to uh, uh, making sure you've copied everything I've written down. All right? See you, see you Wednesday, guys.